new self-worth. 2 Samuel chapter 9. For those who have never heard me before, I start off slow, but I'll get there in a minute. 2 Samuel chapter 9. If you have it, please signify by saying amen. That the Bible says, and David said, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son which is lame on, in both of his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machar, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Don't, don't, don't miss Lodabar. <clears throat> then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machar and the, the son of Amiel from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth? And he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Verse number eight, before I shout. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou should look upon such a dead dog as I am? You may be seated after the reading of God's word. I want to talk to you for a few moments today from the subject, Broken but blessed. Broken but blessed. Most of us know the big stories in the life of David. We know that David's, David was anointed the king of Israel. We know the stories of David and Goliath. We know David's flight from Saul, but his refusal to snatch the crown from Saul, he was going to wait on God. We know David's heart for worship expressed in bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem and his desire to build a temple. Many of us even know David's sin with Bathsheba and his, and his ultimate repentance and confession. Many of us know that the divinic covenant with God's promise for Israel's eternal king. But amid of all of these headliners, there's yet a quieter but just as powerful story about David. It does not scream off the pages like the other stories about David, but yet this story is just as powerful as any, and that is the story of David and Mephibosheth. Now, in order for you to understand how powerful this story is, you have to understand who David is and who Mephibosheth is. Now, I don't plan on being long today because what I want to show you is that even though you're broken, you're still blessed. Even though you're crippled, God still has a, a cause for you. Even though you're down, you don't have to be out. Even though you may be living in Lodabar, God has something special and God has greatness inside of you. It's just up to us to go to the king and find it. 
Now, before you, before we move farther, who is Mephibosheth? Mephibosheth, he is the son of Jonathan. And so David, as he is now king over a united Israel, he asked the question, is there anybody left in the house of Saul that I may give, that I may show kindness to? Now, you must understand that David was, was, is now the king of a united Israel. He had made a covenant promise to Jonathan before Jonathan died that he would take care of his seed and he would never be forgotten. And so David inquires, is there anybody left in the house that I may keep my promise to Jonathan? Are y'all with me on this morning? And so the Bible says, here he's ready to get good. David says, is there anybody left? And somebody said, well, there's Ziba who was a servant in Saul's house. David says, go and get Ziba. Ziba comes to David, and in verse number three, he's, and the king said, is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show kindness of God unto him? Here it is. And Ziba said unto him, King, Jonathan has a son which is lame on his feet. Now, Mephibosheth is lame because when he was five years old, Saul and Jonathan were killed. And in that day and time, as Brother Garner so appropriately explained in Bible class on this morning, in that day and time, when your kingship was up, the new reigning king would come in and kill everybody that was connected to your bloodline so that they, he would not have to worry about you attacking him in the future. And so when the servant, when the maid heard that Saul and Jonathan was dead, she took Mephibosheth and she was running with him and she dropped him and he became crippled. Let me put a nickel in the meter right now. Some of y'all have been dropped by people and you are now crippled. Some of you have been dropped by situations and you're now crippled. Some of you have been dropped by circumstances, but even though you're crippled, even though you're broken, you're still blessed by God. Man may drop you, but you're still blessed by God. Man may disappoint you, but you're still blessed by God. Man may turn their back on you, but you're still blessed by God. He was dropped, but he's still blessed. He was crippled in both of his feet. Now, the, the first thing I want to show you is when Ziba explained to David who Mephibosheth was, he not only looked at the person, but he looked at the problem. Okay. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan has a son, that's the person, but he's crippled in both feet, that's the problem. Some folk focus more on your problem than they do on your person. Some people don't mind sharing what your problem is. Some people label you by your problem. But as long as you allow them to label you, you allow them to limit you. Stop letting people label you. Yes, you did what they say you did, but you're still a blessed child of God. Yes, you did and went where they say you went, but you're still a blessed child of God. Stop allowing people to label you because as long as they can label you, they can limit you. What Ziba did not see is, yes, Mephibosheth is crippled, but he has a relationship with the king. And some of you need to understand, you may be broken and crippled, but as long as you got a relationship with the king, everything is going to be all right. Let me go ahead and preach it like I feel it on this morning. So, so Ziba says he's crippled. I'm going to come back to that. He, he's crippled in both of his feet. And David says, where is he? And he tells him he's in Lodabar. Now, if you understand anything about Lodabar, the word means no pasture. Lodabar is a desolate place. Lodabar is a depressing place. Lodabar is a place that you go to die. Lodabar is a destitute place. Not only is Mephibosheth broken, but he's in a desperate situation. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like you're in a desperate situation, like nothing is working out, like nothing is going well, like nothing is coming up your way? You feel crippled in Lodabar. You feel desperate. 
destitute and low to bar. You feel depressed and low to bar. But you got to come out of low to bar sooner or later because the king is calling. The king is wanting you to come home. The king is wanting you to sit at the banquet table. It's time to leave low to bar. So he says in verse number four, Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Makar, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Lodabar is not where the king's court is supposed to be. See, some of us are living beneath our spiritual privileges. We're not where we should be. We need to understand that Satan is always trying to pull us down and pull us back. Satan wants us to stay in Lodabar, but the king has good news for us. The king says, I did not bring you this far to leave you in Lodabar. I want you to come to the king's castle. I want you to sit around the king's table. Some of us in here this morning, we are in our proverbial Lodabar, but God has been too good to you for you to stay in Lodabar. God has done too much for you for you to stay in Lodabar. God has brought you through too many things for you to stay in Lodabar. God has brought you through too many dangers, both seen and unseen, for you to stay in Lodabar. God is blessed. You. God has watched over you, and he says it's now time for you to get out of that depressing situation. It's now time for you to put a smile on your face and joy in your heart. It is now time for you to get up and throw your shoulders back and stick your chest out and hold your head up because I'm doing a new thing for you. God says this thing that I'm going to do for you. People have tried to label you. People have tried to limit you, but I'm getting ready to call you out of Lodabar because I got something for you. I got some blessings for you. I got some grace for you. I got some mercy for you. Put a smile on your face. Put clapping in your hands. Put stomping in your feet. Put a wiggle in your head because it's time for you to come out of Lodabar. If God is sitting on the throne, He's not reigning on the throne for his children to live and die in a desolate place. Jesus came to die that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. Jesus didn't die for me to die right here. I told you the other week, Jesus didn't bring us this far just to bring us this far. Jesus brought us this far so he can take us the rest of the way home. And by the mercy and the grace of God, I may be down, but I'm not out. You may be broken, but you're still blessed. And you ought to focus on your blessings more than you focus on your brokenness. So I don't care how broken you are. You better learn how to focus on your blessings more than your brokenness. Because if you focus on your brokenness, then you'll miss when God is blessing you. If you focus more on your brokenness and the things that are not going well, and let me just teach this. If you're focusing on your brokenness and your crippleness, and you, you, you will not see when God is blessing you and you'll miss an opportunity to give God glory. And what God desires is our glory. And when you're having a bad day, we all have bad days. Somebody called me, no, that's how you doing this. I'm having a bad day. I said, well, join the club. <laughs> Membership is free. <laughs> In other words, you don't have to pay to have a bad day. Just wake up, and every now and again, you're going to have a rough day. But if you learn how to focus on the blessings of God, if you learn how to see that if God woke me up this morning, he didn't do it by accident. God woke me up by his providential care, by his wisdom, and if he woke me up this morning and started me on my way, then I'm going to sing a song of praise. I'm going to pray to God. I'm going to talk to God. I'm going to thank him even when I don't feel like it. I'm still going to praise God. Let me help you real quick. See, praising God is not about how you feel. <laughs> praising God is not about if you feel like praising God or not. Pray You praise God because he is worthy of all of our praise. 
There are a lot of things you may not feel like doing, but you do them because you are a responsible child of God. There are times you may not feel like going home. But you go. You better. <laughs> See, we have to stop doing things based upon feelings. Because your feelings can fool you. That's why some of us looking shocked now. We felt some things. Now when the feeling is gone, you stuck with what you thought you felt and you can't get rid of it now because when you, you felt it at the time, but you don't feel it right now, but you can't return it because there's a no return policy because you felt that way for 30 minutes and then the feeling was gone. Let me tell you, you can feel away for 30 minutes and have to live with that feeling for a lifetime. About how you feel. Don't nobody care about how you feel. You praise God because of who He is. You don't praise Him for what He's doing. You praise Him for who He is so that even when He's not doing exactly what you want Him to do, He's still worthy of your praise because God is not just good some of the time. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. God is good in life, but he's also good in death. God is good in wealth, but he's also good in poverty. God is good in health, but he's also good when I'm sick. God is just good all the time. You can't give God what is due to him based upon how you feel. If that be the case, then Satan will always keep you not feeling well. Sometimes you just got to fight through some stuff. You say, God, I'm going to keep fighting until I feel like it. We give up too easy. Mephibosheth was in Lodabar. It is how he saw himself. But much of how he saw himself is how others saw him. Okay. When Ziba told David about Mephibosheth, he had to let him know he's crippled. But when the king calls for you, it doesn't matter how crippled you are. He accepts you with your brokenness. That's the whole sermon right there. I thank God that he accepts me with my brokenness. So I don't have to have it all together like some of y'all got it all together. I know some of y'all laugh at the rest of us who are still trying to get it together. I know some of y'all look at the rest of us and you just shake your head. How could they do that? How could they? Well, some of us understand we are broken, but we're still blessed. And the reason we shout so loud is that in the midst of our brokenness, the king still says, go get him. Bring him to me. I know he's broken. I know he's crippled, but I got some love and kindness for him, and he needs to come to the house and get it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank God for broken people who understand that I'm broken, but I'm still blessed. Thank God for broken people who understand that my brokenness will not make the king turn his back on me. Thank God for broken people who can still walk by folk who's talking about them and come into the house of God. Thank God for broken people who can still be criticized, who can still be ostracized, but they're still making their way to the king because the king called me, and if the king called me, I ain't going to let you stay. Stop me from getting to the king. He's in Lodabar. And David said, in verse 5, here's what I love. 
David says, go get him. <laughs> go get him. Oh, my goodness. I just saw this. Thank you. He said, go get him out of that house. <laughs> and bring him to this house. <laughs> go get him. Because I have something for him. And I can't give it to him in that house. I got to give it to him in this house. Thank God that he let you come to this house. Thank God that he called you out of that house and put you in this house. In this house, there's joy. In this house, there's blessings. In this house, there's peace. In this house, there's compassion. In this house, there's grace. In this house, there's mercy. Go get him out of that house and bring him to this house. That's why I love this house. Oh, I love this house because the king is in this house. How do you know whether there are two or three gathered together in my name? I'm in this house. He ain't in that house. Baby, he's in this house. Go get him. In other words, he's somewhere he shouldn't be. Watch this. David is the king. He could have blessed Mephibosheth where he was. <clears throat> he could have sent blessings to him. He said, I don't want to send blessings to you. I want to give blessings to you. See, oh my God. Thank you, Spirit. See, there's something about the house of God. That's why I don't understand how people can walk away from the church, from the house of God, and give up all of these blessings because the blessings are in this house. Let me help you. I don't care how mad you get, don't you leave this house. I don't care how upset you may be, don't you leave this house. God could bless you in that house, but he says, I'm going to bless you in this house. Now, Mephibosheth, verse 6. Now, when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, this is really a question, Mephibosheth, he said, behold, thy servant. And David said unto him, okay, so Mephibosheth is, 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 is crippled. Mephibosheth is crippled. He makes his way to the king. He's been in Lodabar. Saul and Jonathan at this time had been dead between 15 and 20 years. So for 15 years at least, he had been living beneath his spiritual privileges. For 15 years, he was hiding from the king. Because in his mind, I am an enemy of the king. And the king is going to kill anybody that is connected to the family of his enemy. So when David finds him, he comes with fear and intrepidation in his heart and spirit. And so when he sees David, he drops down on his knees bows himself in reverence to David. In other words, he's asking David for mercy because he knows that David has the right to kill him, but David gives him comfort. David says, fear not. See, God is not trying to destroy you. God says, fear not. 
He says, listen, Mephibosheth, fear. Can you put the scripture up so I can see? He says, what verse is that, seven? Put verse seven up so I can see. He says, fear not, for I will surely show you. Now, that word kindness is an interesting word. That word kindness is an expression of love that you don't mind others seeing. See, when you're kind, you are expressing love towards somebody else. And to be kind, it does not mean, it, it does not matter what they've done to you. Let me put two pennies in the meter real quick. You don't treat people the way they treat you. You treat people the way you want to be treated. <laughs> so even though Saul tried to kill David, David is going to show kindness to the grandson of Saul. Oh, my goodness. Nobody wins when you try to get people back. The, 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 the month of November, I, I, I was thinking about this, and, and God confirmed it uh, the other day. The month of November, uh, y'all remember back in probably March, we did a series on, on forgiveness uh, God has placed on my heart to do that for the month of November. And, and the reason I do that is because all of us, when, when you've been wounded, uh, you, you can't, sometimes you got to go back for a checkup. So, so, see, when people have hurt you, now I don't mean no casual, no, I mean hurt you to the core. I mean, when... when when you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that somebody was moving as an agent of Satan, <laughs> you, you, you don't have to guess it. You don't have to wonder it. You know, you, you know that it was the hand of Satan that caused them to do what they did to you. I don't care how strong you are. Bullets do penetrate. Even Superman has kryptonite. <laughs> so what we have to do is be reminded that in order for me to stay spiritually healthy, I cannot allow the toxicity and the acidic nature of an unforgiving spirit to corrode my spirit. Because forgiveness has more to do about you than it does the other person. And reality, forgiveness has nothing to do with the other person. You forgiving somebody else ain't got nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with your relationship with God. And what God is saying is, you make sure that your relationship with me is the way it should be, and I'll take care of that over there. And, and so the month of November, we're, we're going to have some very open discussions and, and because I believe that healthy churches grow. And we had, a, we had a leadership meeting on this morning. I was telling the leaders, we don't have to make the church grow. Healthy things grow automatically. <laughs> All we have to do is focus on being healthy. And let me say this, since I'm, since I'm chopping in high cotton, if we see anything that's not healthy for this church, we're uprooting it. I, I want y'all to hear me kind of clear. Anything that is not healthy for the kingdom of God, we as leaders have to stand together and uproot it. No, it's nothing personal. 
it's not some of y'all gonna get upset, some of you gonna get mad. What, what I'm not talking about anything. I'm just letting you see, I believe in letting people know stuff up front. That way it ain't no, you know, well, uh, no, 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 no. We have responsibilities in the kingdom of God to protect the flock. And if something has infiltrated the body and has caused, watch this, dis-ease, <laughs> then you have to be strong enough to give it the right medicine. Because if this ease spreads, it may start in the finger, but it can affect the whole body. David says, listen, I'm going to show kindness towards you. This is based upon the covenant that he had with Jonathan. Because their souls were tied together. And when you, and when you, <laughs> he liked the sermon, I guess. And when you understand, y'all look at me. They got that. Y'all, uh-uh, 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 up here, up here. They got that. They got that. As long as he don't get to me, everything all right. They got that. <laughs> so so let's, let's not become distracted. Y'all don't forgot where we at? Y'all 800 Joseph E. Boone. This bank head, not book head. Okay. So let's focus on the word of God and everything else will be taken care of. So David says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show kindness. Now, I want you to see this before we go. David remembered the covenant that he had with Jonathan, even though it was 15 years later. David says, what I'm going to do is, Mephibosheth, I'm going to show you kindness. Verse 7, and David said unto him, fear not. For I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. Watch this. Not only will I show you kindness, I will restore. In other words, I'm going to give you everything that you missed out on because you were out there and you didn't understand that I was not trying to kill you. I was trying to bless you. But since you in the house now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back and bless you for the years that you spent out there. Thank God that he gives us blessings that we don't even deserve. Thank God that he gives us blessings that we can't even contain. It's like Job. God gave him double for his trouble. When you stick with God, he'll bless you for others in your life. Let me close this thing. See, he was blessed. Not because Mephibosheth, not because of who he was, but he was blessed because of his father, Jonathan. And some of us right now today, we're blessed not because we've been so good, but we're blessed because we had a praying grandmama. We're blessed because somebody prayed for us a long time ago. We're blessed because somebody took us to the throne when we were out there doing everything that we thought we were big enough to do. We're blessed and we're living on the blessings because there was a mama that stayed up and cried over us all night long. We were blessed because there was a daddy who worked three jobs just to make sure you had shoes on your feet and food in the refrigerator. We're blessed because there was a grandmama that put you on her knee and she sang the old songs of Zion. She was singing songs like amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved the rest like me and even when you got out into the far country you still remember that song while you were listening to beatboxing and hip hopping every now and again amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved the rest like me it flooded your heart when you were like the prodigal out in the far country doing everything that you were able to do while you were clubbing while you were drinking and stinking while you were smoking smoking and joking. Every now and again, you heard the words of your grandmama that said, be not, be not weary in well-doing. Every now and again, while you out there laying and playing, sleeping and staying, y'all ain't saying nothing, you'd hear the words of your grandmama say, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And then like the prodigal, you came to yourself and you said, I'm going back 
sleep home and you went to this house. You didn't go to that house. You came to this house and now you're sitting. You're sitting in a pew thanking God. You're sitting in a pew praising God. You were out there, but now you in here. That's why you praise the way you do because he could have killed you out there. That's why you're saying the way you're saying because he could have left you out there, but he reached way down and picked you up and set your feet on solid ground. And so you come in here and you ain't faking, you ain't praying, you thanking God for everything that he's done. You saying I was broken, but thank God I'm blessed. I was out there, but now I'm in here. I was crippled, but now I'm walking. You came to him. It doesn't matter if you're crippled or not. Just get to the king and the king will bless you every time. Yeah, yeah, you, you broken. But don't you let anybody tell you you ain't blessed. See, folk will try to label you because they don't want you to go any higher than they are. Some folk are jealous of you. Sisters, don't you know why some folk don't talk to you? They jealous. But you know why some folk have a problem? They jealous. But you can't focus on that. What you have to uh, see, what, what, three minutes. What, when, what, when he said, I'm a dog, that's how he saw himself. David had to let him know, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't have time to. David said, from now on, you're going to sit at the king's table. Now, when he's sitting at the king's table, you don't see his handicap. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. See, 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 the king's table covers up everything that's handicapped about you. Just get to the king's table. See, that's why David said, now, 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 what you're going to do is you're going to sit at my table. That way when folks see you, they don't see your handicap. They don't see your crippleness. They don't see your brokenness. As long as you're at the king's table, can't nobody bother you because you're close to the king. Some of you, that's why you're brokenness has been exposed because you've stepped away from the king's table. See, when you're at the king's table, folk don't know you crippled because you don't have to get up and serve yourself. The king has taken care of everything. He said, Mephibosheth, what you're going to do is you're going to sit at my table. So your brokenness does not matter because you're at the king's table. Some folk will focus on your brokenness instead of your blessedness. Let me go and close with my cowboy story. There were two stories I was going to close with. Since you're from Dallas, I'll use the cowboy story. I, I, I love, gr growing up, I used to love the Dallas Cowboys, everything about them. They were America's team had that star, Tony Dorsett. Roger Staubach. And then when I started understanding football, they got guys like Michael Irvin and Emmett Smith and all the Moose Johnson, all those. But there was a period when the Cowboys were winning on the field, but they were losing in the locker room. Let me, let me help you. They were winning on the field but they were losing in life. 
Michael Irvin, one of the greatest receivers. He got in trouble. He's from Fort Lauderdale, Miami, Florida area. And I remember he got in trouble uh, with drugs and doing other things. And thank God he, he's recovering. And I remember this like it was yesterday. He did a press conference after his suspension. And he answered all their questions. And then it was time for him to come back after the suspension. And reporters were around his locker. And they asked him, Michael, what about the things that you did off the field? He said, no comment. The other guy asked him, have you kicked the drug habit? No comment. Mike, are you going to answer any of our questions? He said, hold on. He said, now, I had a press conference. I answered the questions once. Now all I'm going to say is when you ask me and try to remind me of what I've done is no comment. I need to tell some of y'all that there are some church reporters who will try to remind you of what you used to be, remind you of what you used to do. Yeah, you did everything they say you did, but guess what? It's been cleared up by the blood of Jesus. And the only thing I got to say to you is no comment. You know you can ask me all you want, no comment. You can talk about me all you want, no comment, because everything I've done has been cleared up by the blood of Jesus. You don't have to answer. Every question somebody asks you, are there any broken folk here on this morning? <laughs> Life can break you, but God can bless you. Mephibosheth was broken, but the king blessed him. <laughs> For 15 years, he lived without the blessings that God had for him. How long have you been living without the blessings that God has for you? You have to make a decision in about 30 seconds. Are you going to stay broken or are you going to come to this house? Don't walk in cripple and walk out cripple. Don't walk in broken and leave broken. If you walk in broken, you ought to leave blessed. Because when you come in contact with the king, it changes everything. <laughs> when Mephibosheth met the king, he understood now I am somebody. And see, when you understand you're somebody, you don't have to run around trying to be something that you're not. Know who you are. You, you don't have to, you, listen, you don't have to dress like somebody else, look like somebody else, get your eyes colored like somebody else. You ain't got to do all that. You ain't got to put toenails on your fingernails and, and ceiling fans on your eyelash. You ain't got to do all that. <laughs> know who you are. And when you know who you are, you can take all that stuff off. Look in the mirror and say, I know I'm somebody. That's not the stuff that makes you who you are. No, I'm not saying I ain't got nothing wrong with it. Some folk need it more than others. But, but just, 
Ain't nothing wrong with glamoring up. I have nothing wrong with that. But don't allow that to think that you are that glamour shot. <laughs> oh, glam up. Go on, do your pretty girl walk. Do whatever you're going to do. But understand, the real you is not on the outside. The real you is on the inside. So if you're here today, here, 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 here's what you need to do. You said, preacher, I'm going through some things. I'm just broken. I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle it. I don't know how to come to the king's table. Come on. Come, I mean, the king wants to bless you, but you got to come to him. See, the king didn't leave the house. <laughs> you had to come to the king. If you need Jesus, who is the king of kings, the Lord of lords, you got to step out on faith. You got to come by hearing the word of God. Believe in what you've heard. Be willing to repent of your sins. Confess Jesus Christ <clears throat> to be the son of God. And then we'll baptize you for the remission of your sins. Preacher, what does that do? It puts you in this house. When you're in the house of God, <laughs> everything will be all right. I didn't say all the inhabitants in the house were all right. I said everything is going to be all right. Because it's some folk in the church that if you had your choice, you wouldn't want them in the church. You'd be like Jonah. Lord, I don't want to preach to them because you may forgive them. <laughs> but I'm so glad it ain't your church. And some of y'all show sure enough ought to be glad it ain't my church. It'd be like uh, uh, the end game. Marvels, some of y'all be talking just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I do a Thanos on some of y'all. <laughs> you get up out of here. But thank God it ain't my church. Because I'm not perfect enough to have died for this church. So what we have to do is learn how to live and love yeah. in the church. And if you're a member of the church but you're broken, you need prayer. You need strength. Prayer is a powerful thing in the hands of God's children. You don't have to walk out of here broken today. You can say, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Come now as we together stand and sing a song of encouragement. Learning, learning to lean. I am learning, learning to lean. Lord.